Hello friend, welcome to Marine Engineering Hub. This is your narrator Ravi Gupta. Today we are going to talk about emergency generator. In today topic, first we will see the emergency generator line diagram and after that I will speak about the different power which has been provided by emergency generator. And after that we will see the maintenance and the testing procedure of the emergency generator to see that it is working fine or not. And after that, we will see the different starting procedure such as battery starting procedure, hydraulic starting procedure, and we will see how it is actuated. So, please remain tuned till last, you will learn a lot. So, as you can see, this is the emergency generator which is provided on board ship so that it can provide power when there is a main power failure. Okay. Whenever as you can see in this diagram, this is a line diagram, a very simple line diagram which has been taken from Mac George book. Now, this is the main switchboard. Okay, this is the main switchboard. What happened? That this is the breaker of main switchboard and, and this is the emergency generator. Okay. Now, whenever the power failure occur, at that time this breaker got get disconnected. When this breaker get disconnected, at that time the emergency alternator breaker get connected and provide the backup power. The interlock is provided in between such that both breaker doesn't get connected simultaneously. Okay, this is the type of safety. Now, when the emergency generator comes on load, it provides power to only essential equipment which are provided on board ship so that it can carry out the basic function and can help to bring back the system into normal operation. Now basically when the emergency generator come on load it provide power to two different components 440 volt and 220 volt okay from 440 to 220 is been carried out by a transformer okay now let's see first what I written here when there is a loss of the main power supply then the supply is taken over directly by the emergency generator okay this is done by the breaker B when the breaker A trip okay so this breaker A when got trip this B comes into action and will connect the emergency generator to the other power sources in normal operation this breaker will be disconnected and the power will be provided through main switchboard okay now there the interlock provided which also act as a safety to prevent both main supply and emergency supply to close at a time as i have told you the power generated from the emergency generator is supplied to emergency switchboard which has two sections okay now the power which is supplied is connected to emergency switchboard which has connection 440 volt and 220 volt okay now the power generated in emergency generator is supplied to essential services in ship which will be necessary to operate in order to ensure ship safety and also to make sure it can quickly bring back to the normal position so what is happening now as you can see the switchboard is divided into two parts 440 and 220 so mainly the 440 part consists of emergency bilge pump, sprinkler, steering gear and etc. And the 220 volt consists of navigational light, navigational equipment, radios. And after that, through a series of rectifier, the alternating current is converted into a DC current and then supplied in a form of DC to a battery charging such as emergency lightning and another form for fire detection and alarm system and different control system which are operated in DC form. So as you can see means the main purpose of emergency generator is to ensure that the supply should be given in such a way that ship safety doesn't get compromised. So the most of the power is been provided to the navigational equipment such as navigational lights, aids, steering gear, bilge pump, fire pump. So let's see how we can divide the essential service which are supplied by emergency generator are as follow. 
in 440 volt category you can say the power given by emergency generator is to emergency bilge pump so that if there any leakage occur or any flooding occur so the supply can still be given and the ships safety can be prevented a sprinkler system to prevent fire compressor so that to charge the air bottle so that to start the main generator one of the two steering gear circuit so that in any case the ships should be able to be maneuvered one of the generator priming pump and diesel oil pump so that the main generator can be started and emergency fire pump to cope up with the fire so these are the 440 volt connection now let's see 220 volt connection navigation equipment radio communication transform and rectify supply to battery equipment as i have told you other important source are the battery equipment fire detection alarm system navigational aids low power dc system temporary power for battery please note the power for charging battery or other dc source are provided by passing ac current of 220 volt through a set of rectifier as i have shown you here okay now the thing i want to tell you is that these questions are asked what are the power source which are provided by emergency generator so you should remember this okay now let's see what are the maintenance means how we ensure that the emergency generator is always in working condition so in order to ensure that the emergency generator is working fine and all the parameter are in acceptable limit it is needed to run for a certain period of time after a certain interval so basically what we do every saturday we go and it's a part of our Saturday routine that we start the emergency generator locally. We will not take it on load, we will start it locally. And the mode of starting can be chosen in such a way that we start the emergency generator in battery one week and in another week, hydraulic, hydraulic start. And again, in another week, battery. Like this week, bi weekly, we will carry out the starting of emergency generator to in order to ensure that both are working fine so once in a month the emergency generator is taken on load and check that it functions properly and its frequency current load etc are monitored so what happened this is the main panel of the emergency generator as you are seeing right now basically which is here means this is here the panel is provided this is the emergency generator and here is a panel provided this panel is this okay so basically what happened we every Saturday start the emergency generator to check the current functioning will monitor the current okay we will monitor the frequency load everything will monitor and we will run it for a period of 10 to 15 minutes okay whenever we are going to start the emergency generator we will check the following thing what are they all in the level sum diesel oil tank level water in radiator battery and visual inspection and general condition so these are the thing which we when we are entering the emergency generator room first we will check all these things before starting the generator we will first check that the sufficient oil is provided in the sump second we will check the diesel oil tank is full almost full okay water in the tank in the radiator tank because the cooling method in emergency generator is from radiator so it must have water okay second battery visual inspection should be checked to see that is there any unwanted leakage is not there and batteries condition are fine vaselines are properly greased okay these are all things we will check after that i will tell you how we are going to start now the mode of starting of emergency generator are two battery starting and hydraulic starting now one thing i want to make clear that as per regulation the mode of starting should be two but it can be same okay but in most of the cases you will find that it is battery and hydraulic start but in some cases you will find both starting method are batteries it may happen okay now let's see if the method is battery starting then what we will do so first we'll do we will from the main starting panel panel we'll put the selector switch on the test mode from the automatic mode so here is the test switch this test switch is normally is an auto mode okay now when we are going to start 
and we will check the functioning of emergency generator in that case we will have to put it on manual mode okay after that we will see the all the thing means whether any alarm is there or not okay low level pressure low level pressure alarm is there or, or not any alarm is there or not if, if there is nothing any alarm now we will start we will press the start button and the generator will start okay then push the start button emergency generator will start monitor all the parameter and battery condition all the parameter i mean frequency load current and here you can see the low level pressure okay dc volt water temperature low level temperature all will see okay and after that after seeing the all thing and speed after seeing, seeing all thing if it is fine no alarm is there okay we will run it for a period of 10 to 15 minutes okay and after that we will stop the press the stop button and we will stop it okay so what we are doing we are first from this selector switch we are putting it manu manual mode then we are pressing the start button before that we are checking all the thing that is low oil sum diesel oil tank and water in radiator battery condition all thing are checked switch are placed in manual condition press the start button after that the generator will run monitor the low oil pressure water temperature low oil temperature and check any alarm is there or not everything is fine take a round see the conditions no leakage nothing is there okay now press the stop button test is complete now put it on auto mode back to auto mode so that if there is a power failure occur in a, in a normal scenario it can come automatically on load it may happen sometime that is very very important that before coming out from the emergency generator room after testing we should double check that this switch is in auto mode okay this is a psc remark even sometime it happen that psc remark is given now hydraulic starting procedure out the switch in manual mode same thing we are doing it okay now open the valve from the accumulator generator push the spring loaded and generator to start check the loop voltage and frequency okay hydraulic starting procedure i will tell you first let me explain the basic function so as you can see in this diagram this is the reservoir okay oil reservoir and this is the pump cranking pump as you can see here this is the hydraulic cranking motor basically what happened when the hydraulic pressure is pushed at that time this gear teeth get engages with the generator flywheel and rotate the flywheel in such a high speed that cranking speed is provided and the generator started now this rotational motion high rotational motion which is provided by this hydraulic cranking motor is been given by a help of a accumulator where the pressure is accumulated and that pressure is acting on a this body now how it is happening basically it consists of a hand pump this hand pump is been moved up and down up and down such that a design pressure is built up inside a accumulator which is been marked in this pressure gauge in a green zone a zone is provided normally 60 to 80 bar in this green zone when we are pumping it we will check that the pressure is building up in this accumulator and when this come in green zone after that we will release the release valve and this cranking motor will start for a clear diagram here you can see this is the hand pump we are pushing the hand pump up and down the oil from the reservoir is been pumped and it is pushing the accumulator basically inside the accumulator a spring loaded piston is provided which is been pressed against the oil pressure as the oil pressure is built up this get pushed up okay and the oil build up pressure is here now this cranking motor is connected directly with the flywheel when this release valve is released at that time this give a high speed cranking speed to the generator as this as the release valve is released and the generator is started so same thing i am telling here out the switch in manual mode as stated above and check the pressure gauge for sufficient oil pressure so how the sufficient oil pressure is building up by the 
cranking the this hand pump moving the hand pump up and down push the spring loaded valve and generator should start so now what is happening basically after the pressure is build up and it stored in accumulator the pressure gauge will sign 60 to 80 bar when then that case we will push the release valve release valve at that time the pressurized oil will be acted upon the hydraulic motor and it will provide a rotational speed and that rotational speed will help to start the emergency generator so same thing i am telling as soon as it started we will check the voltage frequency and load everything we will start keep it running for 10 15 minutes and after that we will see okay so this is how emergency generator can be started now let's see what are the regulations which are basically asked in your class 4 that emergency generator should be started automatically within 45 seconds means whenever there is a blackout after blackout the emergency generator should start within the 45 seconds and once it comes in a power it have a it should have a capability that it can supply to those power for a period of 18 hour okay this is the emergency generator power should be capable of operating with a list of 22 and half degree and a trim of 10 degree you know why this is important this list of 22 degree and trim of 10 degree because in case of list or heel or suppose any cargo hold get rupture at that time the ship may get list okay and we have to may abandon ship in that case the emergency power should be there so that the emergency lightning near the lifeboat should be easily visible and we can perform these actions for that reason this uh, trim and uh, list clause is there in emergency generator emergency generator with a switchboard is located in a compartment which is outside and away from main and auxiliary machinery above the uppermost continuous deck and not the forward collision bulkhead so Basically, the, this is a very important question that what will should be the situation of the emergency generator. It should be above the uppermost continuous deck but should not be in front of the collision bulkhead. So, it should be above the uppermost continuous deck away from the main and auxiliary machineries. Okay. And it is provided with the independent means of automatically starting by air or battery means that is by hydraulic start or by battery start such that six attempt okay three attempt each by each individual equipment means three attempt by battery three attempt by hydraulic okay so to ensure immediate run up following a main power failure a repeated start up at least three times and further attempt can be made within the period of 60 minutes okay means three attempts should be provided individually by each equipment and should be able to provide within a period of 30 minutes the fuel basically the fuel which is used is the marine diesel oil or marine gas oil which is used in an emergency generator should have a flash point not less than 43 degree very important because it may happen that the ship is moving at a various natural condition like africa where the temperature very high russia so the temperature of the fuel should be very important because it should not get sufficient heated that it have a flash point if it have a flash point of very less it may get ignited to prevent that a flash point is set to a degree of 43 degrees celsius okay and it should be able to start in a cold condition up to 0 degrees celsius means if the temperature outside is 0 degrees celsius at that time condition also the emergency generator should start and for that reason the lube oil which are used in an emergency generator are anti-freeze type, anti-freeze type. Okay, and this anti-freeze type lube oil is basically designated as 15W40. Okay, which are used in emergency generator oil, and the jacket water means which we are putting in a radiator for cooling purpose is also added with an anti-freezing agent so that it doesn't get freeze when we are operating at a cold environment. So these are all the regulations which are provided for emergency generator. So I hope you've understand what are the mode of starting of emergency generator, how it is done, how we are going to start it, and what are the different power sources is provided and why it is provided and how it is provided. If you have any doubt still, please do comment below. I will reply back. And if you like the video, 
please share with your friend and please share on your fb wall post so that more and more marine friend more and more marine colleague can come to this platform because i want all our marine colleague to come and to see and if they can learn and grow together thank you friend have a good day